Hi, I'm Alex Dowd, Mayor of the City of Miami Beach, along with the Miami Beach City Commission. The film you're about to view documents Miami Beach's continuing reemergence through the eyes of prominent business leaders who are investing big dollars and high energy in our city's future. Their words are their own, and their enthusiasm is quite real. I invite you now to peer into our city's future as we explore Miami Beach today. From the sound and fun capital of the world, Miami Beach. I've been a newsman in this community for 35 years and seen the area go through a great deal of change. In the 50s, Miami Beach was more than just a city, it was America's playground. The place to be for the young, the well-heeled, and the in-crowd. Miami Beach had its own pulse and personality. It was the hub of Greater Miami. Today, the city appears to be enjoying a renaissance. A new generation of people have rediscovered Miami Beach as a great place to live and to work and play. What Arthur Godfrey and Jackie Gleason did for Miami Beach in the 1950s, the neighborhood is doing in the 1980s. The neighborhood has taken a great product, fixed it up, repackaged it, and put a great city back in the market and back on the map. It's no accident. Miami Beach's reemergence is the end product of an inspired partnership between government and business. The government has invested about $150 million over the last five years in what's known as public infrastructure. That type of investment is traditionally supposed to yield a $4 of private sector money for every $1 of public sector money. And in fact, we're beginning to see that happen now. Over the last year, $24 million in private sector money was invested south of Dade Boulevard. Another $50 million is due to come online in 1987. Truly a classic example of the government and the private sector working together. The housing market in Miami Beach has just been exploding. We have houses that used to sell for $125,000 to $150,000 a few months ago that are now selling for $175,000 to $200,000. There are waterfront mansions with swimming pools and tennis courts that are in the millions of dollars. And the young professionals that are being attracted to the beach, too, are young people in their 30s. They are just beginning to make their mark in the world. And they're attracted to the city because of its architecture and its history and uh, its exciting lifestyle. They've come to the city of Miami Beach, and they've really fallen in love with it. The buying power of the people in this area has continued to go up. They are strong, aggressive, consumer purchases and are strongly supporting all of the various retail establishments in the area. In 41st Street alone, we have better than 20 financial institutions. Those 20 financial institution offices, together with the other offices of financial institutions on Miami Beach, account for better than $3 billion in deposits. That is an astronomical number when compared to the total financial deposits in Dade County. We see it continuing to grow and expand over the next few years. We have seen the good times and the lean times, and we're really excited about the times we're going into now. Business is up, morale is at an all-time high. Consequently, we put, uh, in the past 12 months, a $10 million first phase of a refurbishment in place here at the Doral Ocean. You can see a pool deck expansion, new presidential suites, new ballroom space, and we're very confident that this will be uh, an, an investment that we will see a very healthy return on in the few, next few years ahead. And when 7,000 county officials come here in 1990, they're going to find a place not just with first-class convention and meeting facilities, but great restaurants and nightlife and attractions along with 10 miles of restored beaches, a football field wide. They're going to see firsthand how a community took charge of its own destiny and built a brilliant future. It's an extraordinarily exciting time for Miami Beach. We're standing in the middle of the new Fontville Hilton Ballroom, which is 26,000 square feet of 195,000 feet of convention space, making the Fontville Hilton the fourth largest convention hotel in the country. At the same time, we're doubling the size of the Miami Beach Convention Center 
to 1,100,000 square feet. In addition to the Fontainebleau, the Doral is expanding. Dozens of Art Deco hotels are rehabbing. Hundreds of young families are moving into the beach. And we are on a roll. And it's very exciting. Here on Miami Beach, I believe that just about anything is possible. From the smallest event to the largest, this area offers great opportunity. Right on this beach, there were 250,000 people to see the Beach Boys. Instead of having a beach that is 20 feet wide, you need a beach as wide as a football field. I hear a Ringo Starr may be performing. Is that indeed true? the far end of the beach there he closed the state highway and had a hundred thousand people for Halloween this is not like Miami Beach in the old days the beach is back <laughs> Soho was my base of operations that I arrived in 10 years before it happened. What brought Tony Goldman to Miami Beach was an incredible real estate opportunity. There's a fortune to be made here. Restaurants, clubs, energy, ambiance, the style, that's what permeates all through Miami Beach. The verandas and promenades along Ocean Drive, uniquely wonderful for the, for the pedestrian to be able to explore through a, an architecturally significant district. People with money coming through the area, spending money freely because they're having a good time. It's the restaurant operator and the club operator who has taken the shot, taken the chances to to fulfill and fill these great, great spaces and be able to bring new life to them, bring a modern energy to a great classic shell and style from the past. I say I've discovered Treasure Island, and I, I mean that. We have 23,000 season ticket holders at Theater of the Performing Arts. If you compare that to numbers in Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, big cities, we have doubled the number of season ticket holders. And that is no fluke. We used to be famous for the, for the older audiences, and they're terrific, and they're coming, but we have successfully picked up support from younger audiences as well, and our, our average has dropped from 62 average audience to 48. We just cannot seem to come up with enough culture to satisfy the appetite of the people who surround that theater. The business people of this community have finally come together. We've developed a consortium of hoteliers, merchants, and apartment house owners committed to revitalize and re-image Miami Beach. In a short period of time, we've installed the kind of amenities that have re-established Miami Beach as a great place to live, work, and play. This may sound a little corny, but team play is finally getting the job done in this community. I think the Neighborhood Magazine has had a major influence on changing people's perceptions of what Miami Beach is all about. It's stylish, it's colorful, it's a little gutsy, and it's definitely a major cut of both your typical Metro-type magazine. We started Miami Beach Magazine because we saw an opportunity to impact an important new market. 100,000 residents and millions of visitors strong. But the real strength of the market lies not in raw numbers, but in the intense interest and awareness. To the people who live here, this city's reemergence isn't just a topic, it's an obsession. Unlike most communities in South Florida, where news is news, people here have a passionate interest in knowing everything that happens in government and business and culture. I guess they care so much. It's because they hung in there through some pretty tough years. And now they're clamoring to be a part of the excitement and the intensity and the rewards of the city's social and economic renaissance. That insatiable craving for information is just great for us because we know we're penetrating more than just mailboxes. We're penetrating the consciousness of an entire community. Today, Miami Beach is a city which devoutly believes in its own future. 
And there's an awful lot of pride that goes into that kind of accomplishment. So I'm very, very, very optimistic about what's happening in Miami Beach. In fact, I'm moving back. I live at Grove Isle right now, but by May 1st, you'll find me right on North Bay Road. And I'm so happy to be back. And I think anybody that has any kind of sensitivity and awareness of what value and, uh, and what beauty, color, and excitement is about, all they have to do is to just come here, experience it, and if they're the slightest bit aware of what's going on around them, they will realize that they've stepped into a paradise.